Snapper Snapper Season Part 2. This is the part where we show you how to catch a snapper step by step and it's really aimed at beginners this video that uh, haven't had much success on snapper or you're just thinking about getting out onto Port Phillip Bay and trying for the first time. So keep watching, we're going to go through all the gear that you need to do this successfully. Uh, we're going to show you the baits, how to rig them up and uh, then we'll get to the part where we actually catch the fish. Okay, gearing up, the gear that you're going to need. Uh, this episode is sponsored by Shimano. Uh, I've been using their gear all season. I've been using their reels my whole life, snapper fishing. Uh, they're fantastic, but I'm going to take you through uh, the basics of what you need to go out snapper fishing. Uh, this rod here is their Shimano Raider. It's very affordable, uh, great cork handles. It is a 704, meaning it's seven foot four inches long, and it's rated five to eight kilo, which is the perfect rating for a rod when you're fishing for snapper. Uh, now the reason why you want a rod that's above seven foot, you know, I wouldn't go anything less than a 704, is one, the longer rod provides you casting distance, two, when it's sitting in your rod holder like this, gets out over your outboards, gets out over your engines, makes it easier when you're netting, so it's not too long, it's not too short, it's just perfect. Uh, this is a graphite rod, and I like using graphite rods because they provide a faster hook set, there's more feel to them, they're that little bit more sensitive. Uh, so that's great, these are great rods. The other rods from Shimano that we're using are their new Revolution series as well. Uh, and as we catch the fish with them, we'll flash up which is which and the details. Uh, now, the reel. The reel is the second part. So this is a spin rod, this is a spin reel. Uh, the reels that we're predominantly using is Shimano's Thunnus CI4 bait runners in size 4000. Uh, these are an awesome reel fitted with a bait runner system. Bait runner system means you flick this little switch back and it will go into free spool. Uh, the next thing that you need to do is spool up with some line, always using monofilament when you're fishing for snapper in Port Phillip Bay. I like to use uh, six to seven kilo line, which is about 14 to 15 pound. Uh, and I like to get it in different colors across my reels, just so if I do get tangles, it's visible. So with this uh, size rod and its rating and this line at this break-in strain, you can pretty much tangle with, you know, any snapper you're gonna come across. You might get a hard time if you get a 10 kilo fish, but anything that's, you know, seven to eight kilo and down, you will be able to land uh, with a rod and reel like this. Okay, so the next bit is your rig, and your rig really is one of the most important parts of fishing for snapper in Port Phillip Bay. So it works, I'll take you from the bottom end. This is a twin hook snailed rig. So basically you're tying a uni knot to your first hook, and then you want to snail the second hook so it's fixed. And the reason that you do that, you'll see soon when we bait up. And then the next thing you wanna do is have a little green bead like this, you don't have to running down your line, but what it does is it gives a bit of a cushion for your ball sinker, and your ball sinker is the next part in the rig here. The sinker size that you want to use is I think the best universal size for Port Phillip Bay is a size one, especially when you're beginning. Now there's a lot of people that don't fish any weight at all and that can be really effective. But the reason why you're using such light sinkers or no sinker at all in Port Phillip is it's not very tidal. So you don't need any big bomb sinkers or anything like that. It's not what you'd call a tidal piece of water. Uh, now let's talk about hooks because hooks are really important. Hooks are what catch your fish. Uh, I believe using good quality hooks, you want a sharp hook because you really want to penetrate that fish's mouth. The size that I like to use is no less than a 6.0. Now, what you'll find between different brands, that size varies a little bit in terms of its gape and it'll vary a little bit in the way it's laid out. But we're using octopus or suicide style hooks and I believe 6.0 and up and we'll show you that in a second when we start to bait up. Now, the best bait, the absolute best bait for so many species and one that is readily available in huge numbers in Port Phillip Bay is squid. Uh, we always go out and get fresh squid before a snapper session. Squid has always been a dynamite bait. This year in particular, fresh squid has really been a big difference between the guys that were catching fish and the guys that weren't. So I highly suggest getting out there and catching yourself some fresh squid. Uh, the other great bait for snapper fishing in Port Phillip Bay is the silver whiting can't catch that in Port Phillip Bay, but you can go and buy it fresh or frozen from your local tackle uh, or boating store. And the other bait, which is absolutely dynamite in Port Phillip, is the pilchard. Sometimes it's all the fish will eat, uh, so you always want to take out pilchards with you. So if you're going to choose three baits, I would always suggest fresh squid, very hard to beat, dynamite bait, uh, silver whiting, and pilchards. So now I'm going to show you how to bait them up and why you tie those hooks the way that you do baiting up. You've tied your rig, you've got all that sorted, now you want to bait up either your squid, your silver whiting, your pilchard, whatever it might be. Flathead, garfish, there's all sorts of baits you can use but we're just going to focus on these three. 
Now, you want to put out a whole fish bait like this, even a small snapper will be able to eat this whole thing. Uh, you know, a one and a half to two kilo snapper could, could potentially even swallow it. So don't be thinking that that's too big a bait. That's fine. So you want to bait it up so you've got maximum hook exposure. So no matter where he grabs it, he hooks himself. So you take the fish and make sure that the belly's facing away from your left hand. Sorry for you lefties, but we're doing it right-handed. So the belly's facing away from you in your left hand. Face the eyes towards you and then grab your hook and push it through what you might call the shoulder just behind the head of the fish. All right, push it all the way through and then you want to turn the hook and thread it. So it's come like that and you're threading it all the way through. Okay, so see how it's threaded through like that? Okay, then what you do is you grab the tip of the hook and you put it up here or just in front of the head, depending on the size of the fish. But this is a tough part of the fish here, so point it down in there like that and turn it back around on itself. So you've got the hook sticking out the top of the head like this. Right, so as you can see, we've got heaps of hook exposure there. Then with your second hook, you want to get some hook exposure happening up here. So you come back up to the top of the tail and you can just simply go in and then back out through the side. And there you have a heap of hook exposure. So as you can see, tons of hook exposure. Now, some guys like to use much smaller hooks than this, 5 O's. I don't, I like heaps of hook exposure. I'm not fishing for pinkies. This video is about catching snapper. So yes, you will miss pinkies. You will miss small fish around about this size if you're fishing with a bait like this, but you'll get everything bigger than that. I've never really had an issue with it. You might miss the odd one, but if you want to catch big fish, use big baits, use big hooks. That's where I'm coming from. Okay, so heaps of hook exposure. Now, the reason why you snelled that second hook is so it sits in nicely like this and your bait's sitting like that. Then what you want to do to keep that hook sitting there is do a half hitch, I do a double. So you just make a loop, yeah? Make a loop like that, drag it over the top, around the hook and pull, sits in tight. You wanna be extra certain, do another one. It's up to you whether you wanna do one or two. I generally do two. And then your sinker and your bead are gonna come and sit down on top of it like that. So there you go. Lots of hook exposure there. It's all baited up nicely and then you can cast it out. Okay, so here's our fresh squid. This is a really small one, right? So if you're gonna bait up a small one, I take off the head, that's all I do. Leave everything else in there. The guts, the ink sac, it's all full of smell. It's basically like a bag of like burly that's gonna be leaking out and it's fresh to a squid, sorry, to a snapper, it smells amazing. And it is the exact same process of baiting up that we did with the silver whiting. So we go back through again, all right, push it all the way through bring it around the other side, yep, and then flip it over to the side you've come out, now you're through, and then basically what you're doing, sorry, what you're doing is you're just pinning it in down here, and then back out again. So again, maximum hook exposure, pull your line through, and then with your second hook, just pin it through the top, that's it, just like that. So top hook just pinned through the top, and then, beautiful. So you don't half hitch this one, just leave it pinned there like that. Got hook coming out both sides. A sn any snapper will just gobble that hole, and you're set to go. Your other really important thing is burley. Burley stinks, it's hard to deal with. It actually costs a bit of money, but it's integral to bringing the snapper around to your boat. You may have found fish on your sounder, but you want to keep them there. Burley's the way you keep them there promotes them to feed, it gets them feeding, the burley's falling down with your baits, it gets everything happening. So there's a couple of ways you can do burley. I'm gonna show you the way I do it because I find it to be the cleanest, easiest way where you don't have to mess about too much. So I like to buy because I'm lazy, pre-cubed burley in a bag, okay? It's a little, it costs a little bit more, but it's so much easier to use, it's up to you. You can sit at your bait board and cube it up or have another guy do it, but I like to buy pre-cubed burley and I like to mix it in with fish pellets. You can buy these fish pellets and they're really good and I mix them both together. It all, it fills your burley out, it lasts you that whole. Remember you're fishing for four hours, you might need a burley for four hours, you might move spots five times. So you really wanna have a good amount of burley. I'll generally use two bags of these and maybe like a bucket this big of pellets. So what you do is you can just simply mix it in with your pellets like this into a, get one of these big kind of paint buckets. I grab one of these like soup ladle spoons, it keeps it nice and clean. 
And then I just mix it all around together like this. You've got a good mix of your cubes. Yeah, and your pallets. And to keep your hands clean, you can just use this barely over the side. So as soon as you get there, what we did the morning when we catch fish that you're about to see, as soon as we got there, I started throwing burly over. I anchored up, first thing I did was I threw over about five of these. Threw some at the back, threw some at the front. It's important as well to remember that you don't bring this stuff out frozen. You want it to defrost. So if you're going out in the morning and it's still frozen, get some water on it because if it's frozen, it'll float. You want it to sink. So I do a few of these, maybe five or six. Throw them over the side. They're floating down slowly. Then I use the Black Pete secret weapon burly bomb. I have it rigged to a hand line so I can get it up and down easily. And the way this works is open up the flap. Then you scoop some of this into it, your mix of pallets and your pilchard. Yeah. And then you just simply drop it over the side, and let it spiral down. The cool thing about this is it's putting the burly on the bottom right under your boat. When you throw burly over the side, it could end up a fair way away and it could send the fish away or to the next boat or something like that. So I've been using this for about five years now and I reckon it's an amazing little thing. So I do a mix of both, over the side and dropping bombs down the bottom. Okay, so you'll see behind me here, I've got my rods in my snapper rack, I've got my spread out. One, two, three, four rods, four rods per person. So I'm out fishing by myself, I've got four. Now, you've probably grown up, you know, fishing and hearing phrases like tight lines. And, and whilst that's true, so you can indicate strikes and things like that, when you're doing this style of fishing in Port Phillip Bay, you do not want tight lines out on your rods. You'll see they've got that bit of give and that bit of bow in them, and you want that. Because the idea is your bait is presenting very naturally, and when the fish picks it up, he doesn't feel weight instantly. If you have a tight line, your bait's gonna bounce up and down all over the place. It won't just sit and roll along the bottom. It's gonna be kind of doing this, and you don't want that. It's a moving target. It's harder for the fish to hit, and it just doesn't look very nice and appealing to the fish. So when you cast out, bail arm off, give it time to sink. If the rods have got a bit of a bow from the wind or the swing of the anchor and the movement of the boat, that's fine. You don't want your lines tight. You've got lightweight sinkers on and just some baits, and potentially, depending on the day, no weight at all. So it's all good. Don't stress about having slack line. Oh, it's a good fish. All right, on to our first fish of the morning. We've been burling pretty hard to bring them around and keep them around. Found good fish on the sounder. And I think this is the first rod I cast out. I think I might have silver whiting on it. I'm not too sure. But it certainly feels like a good fish. So, as you can see, we've got, there's a spread of rods out, so you always have to be careful about where your other lines are. Often, tangles are quite inevitable, but you've just got to work around them. So often this time now, where the sun's not actually up, you know, it's what we call first light, is always a hot bite time. Now he's running around this way. I can shift this around here. Now, left my net in a pretty unaccessible position, so I'm going to have to try and grab the net. Wasn't prepared in that regard, so always have your net ready. Now I'm getting some colour over here now. He's a good fish. Now, I wonder if my lovely cameraman can just reach back there and grab me the net. So I can net this fish, because he's a good fish, that's for sure. Thank you very much. There he is, so that's it's a nice Melbourne early morning red, which makes getting up first thing in the morning with no sleep all worth it. Oh, that's a good fish. All right, there we go. That is your classic Melbourne snapper big old boy beautiful fish eat great that's a good size but it's a hot bite window on a small one so we're going to get him back in uh, to the esky and we're going to keep fishing get more baits out
Yep. Yep, on to another one. We just saw it having a bit of a nibble there. And uh, so I picked up the rod and just felt for the strike. It's a smaller fish than the one we had before. But a fish, so this is number two. So it's been a while, like uh, we had a seal come through straight after we caught that first one. And uh, if you thought seals were a beautiful creature, well they kind of are, but when you're snapper fishing, they are dreaded and doom because they can steal your fish. So I'm gonna wrench this guy in as absolutely fast as I can because I don't want the seal getting him. But great eating size fish. Oh. There we go. Yeah, and this is just your standard Port Phillip snapper. Not a huge fish by any means. Let's get him out of the net. But yeah, I mean, still good fish, not gonna complain. Good size for eating, you could even, you know, bake him whole or whatever, but yeah, great fish. This one feels better. Not pull and drag, but he feels better. You might not know he's hooked yet. So all we've done, basically, between the first fish and the second fish and the third fish, is just burly really hard. We haven't seen that seal, seal again since, which is awesome. Uh, so just back to hard burlying. And look, at this time of year, well, look, we're in November 2017 for anyone that's watching it in another time. Um, and the water temp is still really low. So we haven't had hot weather here in Melbourne, um, which has kept the water temp down. And we you know, really want that above 16 degrees for um, snapper. So up here in the north, it's only 15.8. Um, so you've really got it burly hard because the fish are just that little bit, little bit finicky. They're not really feeding hard. Um, and you know, you've just got to keep burling. So we've got colour here, about to net the fish. Now yeah, he's about in between the last two, a bit bigger than the last one. Quite a bit smaller. Oh, quite a bit smaller than the first one, but he's a good fish that I'm very, very happy with. And there you go. So you can see this fish is milting, which is a sign that they're spawning. And again, you know, that's about a one and a half, possibly two kilo fish, but you know, beautiful eating size, great fun to catch. And I can tell you now, if there were, if it wasn't just me by myself and you had more guys changing baits, burlying, doing all that kind of thing, uh, we probably would have caught a lot more. So always go with a crew of at least two or three of you, working the rods, doing the burly, changing the baits. That's how you do it, that's how you catch snapper. You know, there is a lot to it, but it's not overly difficult. You've just got to do the right things. And those main things are the